Well, our speaker today is Logan Spiewak, and last summer, a mutual friend of ours uh, and I were talking, and uh, our mutual friend said, you got to have Logan speak in chapel. Well, the false chapel schedule was set, so we worked on one, you know, for right now. In between that, our, our friend went to be with the Lord, and it's the first time I, I heard Logan speak was at his funeral, and it happened that Logan came up and he brought along with him uh, my friend Ron Burris. Hello, Ron. And uh, Ron and I have been together ever since college days. And uh, so Ron has been working also with Logan, so I ask you to give a short introduction. Okay. Well, you're going to hear Logan's story. Uh, Logan came to Christ through the witness of Don Trott, and he's going to share that with you. And when Don knew that he only had about three months to live, I had met Logan a year before. He contacted me on the phone and said, you need to take over discipling Logan. So I've had the joy of meeting with Logan every week since June, and we're continuing on his walk and growth in the Word of God, and I'm excited for him to share his story and God's story with you. Welcome, Logan. With a show of hands here, who has ever been given a gift that's been undeserved? That's what God's grace is. It's undeserved, it's unearned, it's not just getting what we don't deserve, it's getting the exact opposite of what we do deserve. We deserve wrath, judgment, and punishment. And instead we get total forgiveness, love, and adoption. I mean, what's better than that? Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it's not of our own doing. It's a gift of Jesus Christ. Of Romans 11, 5, 6, it's all grace or it's not grace at all. And there's a need of grace in everyone's life. We're all brought into this world in Adam, in sin. Lost, broken, confused. What's our purpose? I'm sure we go throughout our week, ask, individuals ask us, what's our purpose? And we have to give an answer to that. Now what I'm going to tell you guys is very humbling, humiliating, because I'm bringing out dead skeletons in my closet. I'm sure we all have skeletons in our closet as well. So please bear with me. When I was a young man, age of 12 to 13 years old, I really started to get into a lot of trouble. I started to dabble in sin, right? I would step in it over here. I would step in it over here. Ooh, the water feels good, right? It's like a hot tub. It's like, ooh, feeling good. And next thing you know, I'm swimming in it and drowning in it. I love sin so much. I started to smoke weed, do drugs, steal my mother's prescription medicine and sell it to people and say it was ecstasy when I think it was blood pressure medicine. That's embarrassing. And not only that, I was hanging around people who killed a lady over money. I was 13 years old hanging around men that were twice my age that killed a lady at a gas station with a, with a shotgun and to the head. And you can look this up on Penn Live if you'd like. But that's God's grace because that could have been me. And I didn't realize it at the time. And you think I would learn from that, but I didn't. I got in so much trouble and you can only imagine what dysfunctionality that happened in my family that I created, that, that, tr that trauma, that conflict. And I know I'm not perfect and my family's not perfect. And I'm sure we all can relate to that family dysfunctionality. But God's good. As I continued on throughout my adolescence, I eventually got in so much trouble, I got expelled from high school for fighting. And I got charged with five felonies at 17 years old for premeditated assault, drug paraphernalia, everything. And I'll never forget this, and I'm going to tell you, tell you guys this. I was in a courtroom in Carlisle in front of a judge. And the gentleman read off everything that I was getting charged for. Boom, 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 boom. I can't even remember everything. It's, it's a nightmare. It's like a resume. 
And he says, guilty. And my mother's sitting right here where Ron Barris is, gets up, looks at the judge, looks at me, and tells me how much of a disappointment I am to the family. That hurt. That hurt. As many of you can imagine, what kind of relationship I have with my family today is not what it was. Thank, praise God for that. I love my mom very much. So after being expelled from high school, I had to go to an alternative school for disobedience, for with people who committed felonies that were going to juvenile. I was had a probation officer, house arrest. I had to pee in a cup. I did it all. It was, just, it was not fun, and uh, it's it's embarrassing and very humiliating. I thought I was turning my life turning my life around. I eventually got out of this program, the YCP program, and graduated high school from this alternative program. And I thought I was pulling it together. And so I decided to join the military because I was not getting any structure or discipline at my, at my house. Um, my family didn't walk with the Lord at the time. I had no theology background, no biblical doctrine background. I had no idea who Jesus Christ was. I mean, we all heard about Christmas and Easter because we live in America. But I had no supervision at home because we had a bigger family and my father was always at work and my mother was a stay-at-home mom. But we had no money growing up. And I was loving, and I was loving the world, and I was loving sin. But after I thought I pulled it all together, graduated high school. I think I graduated high school with a 1.8 GPA. They just pushed me through. They said, oh, I'll get rid of this kid. We don't want him anymore. Quite frankly, I don't blame them. So I went into the military, United States Marine Corps, um, and I thought that was going to help me out. Uh, that did not help at all. I actually got separated early for a medical condition, and I kind of went back into this cyclic cycle when I came home because I didn't have a good relationship with my family still at the time from being a younger man that created all this conflict at home. So now I'm back home. I'm like, oh man, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I contemplated suicide a couple times because I didn't, I, was, I didn't know what to do. And the best part of my day was going to bed. And as when I got home, and I had no purpose, no idea what I was doing, I would just go to the gym every, every day just to release some stress, some anxiety, to get away from the world and just escape my problems. And it was good, you know, I released some dopamine, felt good, felt like I did something for my day, worked out, yeah, blah, 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 whatever. But one day, I had these shoes on. And no, this is not a Nike endorsement. They're gonna have to start paying me for this. I had these shoes on and the older gentleman was really fascinated by them because the shoe, instead of traditional shoelace, how you would pull it and, tie it from the t and you would uh, tighten it from the top like a regular shoelace, you would pull it from the back to lock it. And I would just work out and the shoe would get loose and I'd come here like this and I'm pulling the shoe and I'm pulling the shoe. And the older man, right where Dr. Lytle is, sitting, was standing there, and just looking at me. And you know when somebody's looking at you, you can see in the corner of their eye, you see somebody staring at you, you're like, oh man, this guy know me, do I know him? I don't wanna be, be seen, do I? And he comes up to me, and he's like, what are you doing back there? I said, well, I'm tying my shoe. And he's like, huh, I've never seen anything like that. And I said, that's why I bought them. And I had this conversation with him. And when I first met him, I thought he was a poor old man. I mean, you should have saw what he had on. I thought he had rags on, man. Good night. He had on some white New Balances. They were crusty. I was like, good night. I was like, this guy had, this guy got no family. I'm like, woo. So we had a conversation, and I felt, I felt compelled to buy him a pair of shoes. I asked him, I said, sir, what size shoe do you wear? And he said, oh, I wear a size nine. And I said, okay, I got it. I don't remember anything else in that conversation other than the size shoe he wore. So conveniently enough for me, I went back to the same store where I originally had bought my pair from. And get this, they had his size, a size nine, but it was the last pair there at that store. Well, isn't that a gift from God? I didn't know that at the time. I was like, oh, I'm a lucky man. 
So I come back to the gym the next day, and I'm looking for this old man. And I, I can't find him anywhere. I'm like, man, this guy really might be homeless. I have no idea where he's at. And I have my backpack on, and then I finally spot the gentleman. Again, where Dr. Lytle was sitting. He's on an incline bench, just resting at the top, in the top position like this, doing a whole bunch of abs. And I'm looking at him, and I take my backpack off and had this, ba this box of shoes in my bag, and I hand them to him. I said, here you go. And you should have saw his face. Flabbergasted. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. You didn't have to do that. I said, no, it's a gift. I wanted to do it. So I see this old man in the gym now, 80, 80 years old, by the way. He's 80 years old and better, in better shape than people my age. It's, it's kind of impressive. And I see him at the gym every day. And I'm looking at him like, oh, man, this guy got some nice Nikes on now. You know, we're building this friendship, this relationship. It's great. And I finally learned his name. His name's Don, Don Trot. And me and Don started, you know, I started to open up to Don, tell him about my childhood, how much trouble I got in, how much of a failure I was, a disappointment, how much I love sinning, smoking weed, having sex before marriage. Quite frankly, I love sinning. And if you don't, then you're doing it wrong. Am I right? And I just built this relationship with him. I'm glad he did. And then Don came up to me one day and he handed me this tract. And I didn't think anything of it at the time. It's One Minute After You Die by Aaron Litzer. And I put it in my backpack and went out to my car parking lot and I read it. I'm going to read the passage that really hit home for me, for you guys. Don't imagine for a moment that you will get to heaven without the right credentials. You will not be there because your spouse has a right to enter. You will not be there because you have a child who is already there. No, this is an individual matter. And only those with the right credentials will be allowed entry. Our problem, of course, is that God will not accept us on our terms. We cannot arrive at heaven's gates hoping for leniency. It is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. Hebrews 9.27 We cannot come pleading for special favors once we have slipped from this life into eternity. And I read it again and again. And quite frankly, I had no idea what Hebrews, Hebrews 9.27 meant or 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians is. I was like, what is this? I've never even picked up a Bible in my life. And it finally hit me. And I accepted Jesus Christ right there in that car parking lot that summer, June 13th, 2021. And it was the best decision I ever made. And then I went back to the gym the next day. Granted, I wasn't even go. I went to the gym to get away from the problem, right? To go work out, hit some squats, hit some legs. I wasn't looking for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came looking for me. And I went and I shared the good news with Don. And I said, Don, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And you know what Don did? Opened up his hands and gave me a big hug. Now, granted, at, at, at the time, I did think Don was poor. He was not poor, One word, and he, but he was an old man. <laughs> Forgive me, Don. <laughs> so me and Don started to meet more intentionally outside of the gym, you know, starting to build a relationship. I told him about me. Okay, we're comfortable with each other now. I see this old man with shoes. You know, we're getting lunch. We're having fun. And one day, Don was like, Logan, come over to the house. I said, okay. So I get there, I'm driving my car to the house, get, get in the park, and I get out, and I'm looking at their house. I'm like, huh, he should have bought me shoes. <laughs> I hope I kept that receipt. <laughs> so I went into the house, and me and Don decided to study the Word of God. And we started at Genesis 1. And I said, Don, who's Genesis? So that we went through a different series, Operation Timothy, which are building blocks into Christianity, who Jesus Christ is, why Jesus picked his disciples, why he died on the cross, why he was uh, resurrected and all that good stuff. Because I didn't know anything about biblical doctrine, like I said. And then Don's mentorship really turned into a fathership. You know, I started my business, Boots to Health, when I was 20, when I got out of the military, when I first met Don, I opened up a gym, a personal training gym, a fitness studio. 
And I really didn't have any idea what I was doing. I was like, okay, graduate high school, 1.8 GPA. Okay, um, yeah, math, economics, make money, great. How, how, how do I go about this? But Don always said, Logan, keep the faith. And I kept the faith. So as me and Don, our relationship started to build. And I was in business for a year with Boots to Health in my personal training studio. Don was like, well, Logan, 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 Logan. What are you doing for the person, the whole person? He's like, you know how important it is to focus on your spiritual health. And I was like, you're right. So we created a foundation together that helps veterans from a holistic standpoint on their physical, their nutritional, and their spiritual well-being. Because I'm sure we all come from military families and we all know veterans that have probably committed suicide. And we wanted to create this program to be a caveat for individuals who get out so we can help them. And praise God we are. And if it wasn't for Don handing me this tract, well, I would not be up here today. I would probably be dead. And I thank God every day for that old man. But, as Dr. Lytle said, Don is no longer with us. He's passed away. He's in a much better place now. He's in glory. And he uh, definitely put a lot of pressure on me, so praise God for him as well. Yeah, thank you, Don. But no, that is the extent of grace. Ephesians 2, 7, it's immeasurable, right? God could save me. God could save all of you. And I hope to goodness gracious you guys are all walking with the Lord. There's nothing better than that. I mean, come on. No matter how much wrong you do, Jesus Christ is always going to forgive you. And you're going to be sanctified on a daily process as you continue to walk with the Lord. And I encourage you all to walk with the Lord. Romans 5.21, grace is super abounded. It's, it's, an, it's, an inf- it's infinite. It's enough for everybody in this room. I mean, I probably sin more than all of you, but there's plenty to go around. There's plenty of grace. I'll save some. And there's a provision of grace. The role of Jesus in providing grace. Grace doesn't work against righteousness and justice, but through it. The cross satisfies justice and gives, and grace gives us righteousness. This is where you hear of the gospel by word or by tract or an old man, right? Think about this. Something so simple as me tying a shoe got me to where I'm at today. Isn't that funny how God works? But there's a fruit of grace as well. Grace provides salvation. God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Grace offers salvation to the world, to whoever believes. So you, 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 and you, and you back there. Grace initiates salvation. It's not of ourselves, but it's a gift of God. Grace secures salvation, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. By grace you have been saved through faith. Grace transforms the one who is saved, Ephesians 2, 10, creating Christ Jesus to do good works. God has prepared for us to do his craftsmanship, his workmanship. And this is where my story is at now, through the gift of grace. It's life, it's life changing, it's transforming, it's the power of grace and giving us a new life, a new birth. And if Jesus Christ did this for me, just imagine what he's gonna do for you all. I just encourage you all, brothers and sisters, to walk with the Lord. You can't go wrong. And just to think, it started with a pair of sneakers. Right? I'm sure we, all of us in our lives know somebody who needs grace. Family members, co-workers, spouses. Right? See, it's, it's interesting because through our program, right, that we work with all these veterans, I relate well to these individuals because of the amount of anxiety depression, hopelessness, fear, what comes tomorrow. You know, I just am very blessed I can connect with these individuals and by the grace of God, I can help them through. And we, in being Christians, we're supposed to be intentional with individuals, right? We need to come to people and meet them where they're at. We don't want to be bombastic or dogmatic to individuals, right? Because that can throw people off from Christianity, but we want to come to them and where they're at. 
And I encourage you all to do that this week. Whether it's your parents, brothers, sisters, go to where they're at. Because that's where, I, that's where my purpose is now, to share the gospel. And you know, it's quite funny, because I just want to throw this in there really quickly. You know, when I was 15, 16, oh, whose phone is that? I like that. When I was 15 and 16, you know, it's, it's funny to me, because I used to look at people who would pick up a Bible and be like, you're a weirdo. Why are you picking up a Bible? And what are you going to do? You need to study the Word of God? You're, like, you're a weirdo. Like, I used to bully people about that. And now here I am talking about that. And I'm just so humbled and blessed. And I'm just going to pray for you guys all individually and just hope that you guys continue on your faith walk and walk with the Lord. And I appreciate you guys having me out here this morning. I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time because I'm right to the point. But I would love to connect with all of you. I will be here for lunch and I would love to get to know one of you better. Because by the way, I am 24 years old. I am your guys' age. Don't be deceived. I would love to have lunch with you guys, connect with you guys, ask you any questions. Whether it's about business, running a nonprofit, or ministry. I would love to just have a conversation. So if you would like to have, ask me any questions, please come up to me and feel free to ask. And one final thing is, would you guys join me in a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the gift of grace, Father, and that your mercies are new every morning, Father God. Father, I just ask that you be with everybody here in the chapel this morning, Father God. Allow them to be salt in a world that desperately needs it. Father God, I ask for protection and peace on everybody here and that they continue to open up your word, Father, and study the biblical doctrine and get to know your son, Jesus Christ. I ask this in Christ's precious name. Amen.